talking about? Why do I do these things to myself? I got too excited about the book and messed up my polish. <laughs> oh wow, that's really messed up. <sighs> Hey guys, it's Jay, and today I'm here with part three of my February wrap-up. It's February 28th today, so I'm pretty sure this is all I'm gonna read. I might finish one book tonight. Who really knows? I'll just add it into my March wrap-up if I do. I have read a total of 23 books now, so five more since my last wrap-up that I filmed. So without further ado, let us get started! So the first book that I read for this wrap-up. So my 19th book is Wicked Games by Sean Olin. I gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. This book follows Lila and Carter and they've been dating for four years and their high school basically views them as the it couple. Unfortunately for the two of them their relationship has been falling apart lately and Lila has been spiraling out of control. She's angry and paranoid at the world and her depression has been getting worse for some time now and she's refusing to take her medication. When things go a little bit too far at the senior party, Lila goes home with her friends and leaves Carter alone with his thoughts. This is when Jules enters the picture. She's funny and beautiful and Carter is instantly drawn to her. That's when they cross the line and now there is no going back. I found Lila to be the creepiest character in the entire world. She was so insane. You never actually figure out what mental disorder she has. They only mention that she's taking antidepressants, but it's definitely, definitely something other than depression because she is crazy. I was on the edge of my seat the entire time trying to figure out what Lila was going to do next, and although I don't like how Carter handled the whole party in the first place, you couldn't help but feel sympathetic for what he was going through because, like, Lila is insane. I did like Carter. I feel like he actually felt guilty for what he did to Lila. I feel like a lot of guys his age would just end the relationship when he got the chance because... Like, there's this new girl Jules and she obviously likes me so I can get action so why would I stay with the crazy girl? But he actually tried to pull through and stick with her. I really liked Jules. I thought that she was a great understanding character, especially when she figured out that her and Carter couldn't be together. She wasn't like super clingy. Which I feel like a lot of girls her age probably would be. So I liked that about her. She was very independent. And the one thing I don't understand about this book is why nobody called the police on Lila for the things that she did. I don't understand why that didn't cross the characters' minds because honestly I would be like, You're insane. You need help. 911. The first half of the book was definitely slow for me, but the second half of the book did keep me on the edge of my seat the whole time. The ending is definitely a cliffhanger and I'm not 100% sure if the second book in the series follows the cliffhanger or if it's like another standalone. The next book that I read is my 20th book and that is Daughter of Smoke and Bones by Lainey Taylor. I loved this book. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. It was so good. And I need the second book in my life. I don't own it and I need it. This book follows Karu, and she's your typical teenager who lives in Prague, except that she has blue hair growing out of her head and no parents. She lives with her foster family of Chimera, who are part human, part animal hybrid. She constantly runs errands for her foster father Brimstone, who owns a shop that goes between two worlds. In this world, Wishes are the currency and the teeth are the tokens to these wishes. Karu lives in the human world and she feels like she doesn't quite belong in this world and she doesn't quite belong in the other world either. This is when she meets Akiva who is a seraphim and he is a warrior angel. The Chimera and the Seraphim have been at war for many centuries and Akiva and his siblings decide that they are going to rid the world of the Chimera once and for all. I thought that the writing in this book was amazing. It was almost poetic. The romance was a bit annoying to me. I feel like it happened way too fast. And we all know that I hate insta-love, so it got to me, but I'm gonna let it slide because the rest of this book was so good. I loved every single character. There was not one that I disliked. Susanna was 
hilarious and I loved her sass. The ending definitely has me wanting more. I need the next book. Like so badly, so, so badly. I need to like run the chapters right now, but I'm still on lockdown so I will not be doing that, but I need it in my life. The 21st book that I read this month was Panic by Lauren Oliver and I gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. In CARP, all the high school seniors participate in this game called Panic once they graduate. Basically out of boredom because their town only has 12,000 people in it and you know what else is there to do than play this game. And it's extremely dangerous. Many people have died or been seriously injured when participating. But for many people this is a way to kickstart their life and get out of CARP. Heather and Dodge are playing for two completely different reasons. Heather didn't think she would ever participate in the game. It started off as a spontaneous decision and then $67,000 became way too much to pass up, especially when she is thinking of her little sister Lily. Dodge, on the other hand, is playing strictly for revenge. This was definitely a slow paced read. It didn't really get overstimulating until about 60% through the book when all the challenges and competition of panic actually started. I think that Oliver did a really good job painting the picture of a small town where everybody wants to escape and I really liked the switching perspectives between Heather and Dodge, although I can't really say I liked either character. They were both really annoying to me. I thought that Heather's voice was kind of annoying at times and I thought Dodge's decision for why he actually wanted to play the game was really stupid. I thought that the plot was pretty predictable. I was able to call a lot of what happened, but on the bright side, we finally have a book without insta-love. So, three cheers for that. You get three stars, Lauren Oliver. Good job. The 22nd book that I read this month was Catch Up Clouds by Annabelle Pitcher. I gave this book a three out of five stars on Goodreads. This book follows Zoe, a teenager living in England, and Stuart Harris, who is a Texan inmate on death row. She writes him a series of letters telling him about her story of a love triangle with a tragic ending. I love the mystery of trying to figure out who died and which boy it was. You don't find out until the last two chapters of the novel which I found to be awesome because usually you find it out way sooner and then it's kind of like predictable from there. I went into the book completely blind. I had no idea what it was about other than it was kind of a thriller and I was expecting like a contemporary kind of aspect to it, but it was definitely not that at all. I really liked the family dynamics of the book and I really liked the relationship between the three sisters. I really enjoyed how the boys actually had flaws because in YA it's usually boys are perfect and you know, all that jazz, but in this one they actually had their problems and that was really enjoyable to read about. I do feel like the ending was kind of anticlimactic though, so that kind of brought the rating down. 23rd and final book that I read this month was Pretty Girl 13 by Liz Coley. I gave this book a 3.5 stars out of 5 on Goodreads. It follows Angela Gracie Chapman, who was 13 when she went missing from a camping trip that she attended with her Girl Scout troop. Three years later, she returns home not remembering a thing that happened. The evidence from her body shows that she was physically and sexually abused and she must try to remember everything that happened to her in order to piece together the identity that she has lost. I went into this book expecting, you know, your typical kidnapping story, but it was so much more than that. It was so interesting to read. I love books with psychology and mental health aspects. So I don't want to give away what the like main twist of the book is, but it was super interesting to read. I went into the book completely blind about the main plot twist, so I definitely suggest doing that because it makes it a lot more enjoyable, I think, than if you knew what mental illness Angie has. You immediately become attached to Angie and her story and you just want to hug her throughout the entire book for what she's been through. Definitely a hard read, but there were some light moments that made it a lot easier to read. It definitely deals with some mature content and it may be triggering for some people. I don't really want to say the main triggers because that kind of gives the book away, but I will say that sexual assault, if that triggers you, then maybe avoid the book or, you know, go into it with the knowledge that there is sexual assault in it. I did think that the mystery plotline was a bit predictable and I was able to call some stuff, but I still found it very enjoyable to read. Alright guys, so that was the next five books that I read this February. 
I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.